Loading a complicated JavaScript library into ServiceNow, such as AngularJS, may seem uh, impossible at first, but with the, follow, with the following trick, you can have AngularJS capabilities or other JavaScript library capabilities with, within your instance in just a few short minutes. Um, first of all, we're going to use the AngularJS uh, library as an example, but uh, in this case I'm going to go to angularjs.org and I, I am going to download um, the 1.3.x, the latest version. And uh, in my case, I'm, I'm going to go with the zip file just so I get all of the files in the AngularJS library. And then I'll go ahead and click download. Uh, once that download is complete, I'll get a zip file that I can expand. And uh, that zip file. Uh, we'll have the library that I'm going to try for this example as angular min.js and um, so what you will want to do is you will want to open up this file into you know a, a text editor and uh, copy the contents of that file uh, we'll, we'll use that a little bit later now what we're going to do is go into our ServiceNow instance and within that instance we want to go to the UI scripts uh, page here. UI scripts are client-side JavaScript files. Similar to script includes which are server-side. Uh, clients, these uh, client-side JavaScript libraries can be called from client scripts, they can be called from uh, UI pages, etc. Um, what we'll do is we'll create a new UI script and I'm going to just name it angularjs.min.1.3.2 just to match uh, the version so I know what version I'm using here and I can give it a description uh, I can say you know uh, my angular library okay now um, you're going to want to use this script field uh, you want, you're going to want to use it leave it blank but you know for this example I'll show you why if, if we were to paste um, let me jump over to my text editor copy the uh, code and if we were to paste the Angular code in here and click Submit, we would get an error uh, saying that it couldn't parse. The syntax uh, parser does not like this format uh, for, for AngularJS and many of the larger JavaScript libraries. So instead, what we're going to do is just let's um, delete that code and we'll click Submit. All right, so now we have a blank library. Um, but we're going to go to our list editor here and we want to show the script field in the list. So I'm going to, going to click the uh, gear icon and let's bring over that list, that script uh, field over to the selected and we'll click OK. As we do so, you'll see that we'll get that script field here. So now if I were to double click that, I could just paste the script right into there and there's no errors because the syntax checker is a client-side syntax checker and we just bypassed it by going totally server-side on this. So if we were to look at that AngularJS min uh, UI script record, we would see that our, our uh, code is all, all there. So, so we're looking good. So now all we have to do is, is reference it uh, within, uh, within some code and to do so, I won't type it out in this video, but I'll just explain you know, kind of what it looks like here. This section that I'm highlighting is, is the section that we're really uh, going to be interested in. And uh, to get this into a UI page, we're going to use this G requires uh, tag. And with that G requires tag, uh, you just uh, specify the name of your UI script as I did here and then you do .jsdbx at the end as a file extension. Now the next thing that um, we need to be concerned with is that the browser uh, will cache uh, UI scripts and so in order if we were to update the UI script or make a change to the UI script um, the browser would keep it cached and so people that had visited that page before wouldn't get the updated uh, script. So what we could do is, is use this little trick here. It's a params attribute and you just paste this exactly um, as shown here. 
And what this does is it leverages a little uh, evaluation script that's done up here. And the evaluation script essentially, what it's doing is it's going to your UI script record and getting the updated on uh, timestamp and and the params uh, the params attribute here will automatically append that timestamp to the URL for your library so that if your library changes the URL to that library will appear to change as well and that will invalidate the browser cache for the uh, UI script Anyway, that's, that's how you get a library such as AngularJS into your ServiceNow instance. <music>